Good morning, everybody. In barely three and a half chapters, Paul has uh, managed to use a number of contrasting imageries. You know we are reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians these days, and I have been focusing on it. And the contrasting imageries that he uses in these short chapters is wise and foolish, wisdom and foolishness, spiritual person and natural person, and then in today's scripture you have this age versus God. He returns to the theme of wisdom and foolishness which we had, he had done in the first chapter already and he returns to that a little bit and he returns to that and I'm going to return to that a little bit as well. However, let me begin with this statement. Let no one deceive himself. Have there been times when either somebody close to you, your parents, I know my dad has told me this, don't fool yourself. And I'm sure we've said that to people as well. You're fooling yourself. Paul says to the Corinthians, let no one deceive himself. And the reason why he reiterates this is because in the use of the themes of the spiritual person and the natural person, remember yesterday he had reflected on spiritual people who are acting like people of the world. So he says, let no one deceive himself. Now Paul appeals to the Corinthians urging them not to deceive themselves because deception is contrary to true wisdom. Deception is contrary to true wisdom. On that note, let us return to the theme of wisdom and foolishness. Paul wants the Corinthians to be wise in this age. But it's how he defines wisdom that is extraordinary. To be wise in this age is to become a fool for Christ. Why? Here is Paul's reasoning. If anyone can, among you considers himself to be wise in this lay age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. So if we are deceiving ourselves, Paul says, become fools for Christ because in becoming fools for Christ, there is wisdom. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. Wisdom, folks, lies in surrendering to the foolishness of God. Wisdom lies in surrendering to the foolishness of God. And then we have Paul making this statement, so let no one boast about human beings because if we boast about human beings, if we boast about ourselves, what are we boasting about? The foolishness of the world or as Paul would say, the wisdom of the world which is foolishness in God's eyes. So let no one boast about human things. Rather, remember, everything belongs to you, you belong to Christ, Christ belongs to God. So what's the practical implication for us today from Paul's exhortation? I think Paul cautions us against self-deception. Wisdom lies in letting our thinking being directed by the Spirit of Christ. And we have a great example today in the Gospel reading, Peter. Peter was a fisherman. And fisher folk know the tide. They know the times to go out fishing. They know where to catch the fish. They know where to throw the, the net. And that night they had caught nothing. And yet, at the command of Christ, he throws the net. He becomes a fool for Christ. And when he becomes a fool for Christ, there is then a harvest. Peter had to stop deceiving himself. 
He comes before Christ and he says, depart from me, Lord, for I'm a sinful man. And what is being sinful in our age? Sinful means to become wise in the ways of the world. Whereas Paul is inviting us to become fools for Christ. It may seem foolishness, folks, but the foolishness of God is greater than the wisdom of the world. May the Spirit of God help us to discern between the foolishness of the world and the wisdom of God. And may we surrender to Christ because Christ belongs to God. Amen.